After the stock of Realme 6 series subsided, Realme 7 and Realme 7i was finally launched in Nepal recently. I have been using both phones for more than two weeks now. Both have the same 8GB plus 128GB variant launched, making Realme 7i the only phone in Nepal to have this configuration under Rs 30,000. But how much does it differ from Realme 7? And which one should you choose? Are there any cons on these devices? Well, don't worry, I'll be explaining everything in today's full review, so let us dive right into it. For both phones, the box size is similar and you get the usual things inside. The smartphone itself is charging adapter, charging cable, SIM ejector, back cover and some paperwork. Our review units include Realme 7 in mist blue and Realme 7i in Aurora green color. Realme 7 and Realme 7i have identical build and design on first glance, so you can check the spec sheet for detailed differences by numbers. On hand, Realme 7 is slightly heavier and thicker than Realme 7i. The plastic back and framing along with Gorilla Glass 3 protection is the same on both phones. The back design however is different. Realme 7i has a L-shaped lens layout making its module different than the vertical lens layout on the Realme 7. Realme 7i's glossy gradient back finish is more of a fingerprint magnet as compared to the frosted finish of the Realme 7. Both have Realme branding on the back but there's also the presence of a circular rear physical fingerprint scanner on the Realme 7i. The transparent and sturdy plastic case provided in the box for both phones will easily fix that issue of their camera bumps wobbling on a flat surface. The top side of both phones is empty whereas their bottom consists of a 3.5mm headphone jack, mouthpiece, USB Type-C port, and speaker cutout. On the left side, Realme 7 has a SIM tray along with volume buttons, whereas Realme 7i has a SIM tray only. On the right, Realme 7 has a side-mounted physical fingerprint scanner embedded in the power button, whereas Realme 7i has the normal power and volume buttons. Personally, I like the grip, weight distribution, and back finish of the Realme 7. Also, both phones do not have any water protection, not even some simple coating, so it's better to be careful. Realme 7i's 6.55-inch HD Plus IPS panel versus Realme 7's 6.5-inch Full HD Plus IPS panel. Do I really need to tell which wins here? When you put them side by side, Realme 7i easily loses due to its inferior 720p resolution and lesser brightness. I also found the color reproduction to be better on the Realme 7. 720p resolution on the Realme 7i was a really bad move. I hope Realme doesn't repeat that. Oh, and I nearly forgot. Both phones have 90Hz refresh rate making navigation and gaming much smoother. I recommend using the auto select option in the settings that will adjust the refresh rate as per the things you are using in order to save battery life. Talking about the display, both phones have similar placement of a punch hole cutout on the top left. Just above, the top side of the display lies an earpiece but there is no notification LED on either phone. Snapdragon 662 on the Realme 7i versus MediaTek Helio G95 on the Realme 7. The same 8GB RAM and 128GB UFS 2.1 storage on both phones makes them equally capable in multitasking and normal UI navigation. The place where the new and improved Helio G95 chipset completely outsigns the older and slower Snapdragon chipset is in CPU and GPU intensive tasks. For example, PUBG Mobile on Realme 7 can hit up to SD graphics and high frame rate settings, whereas Realme 7i is limited to balanced graphics and medium frame rate even with its lesser 720p resolution. Call of Duty however ran on very high settings on both phones which was good to see. Nonetheless, the difference between these two chipsets can be seen more vividly in their benchmark scores. Both phones run on the latest Realme UI version 1.0 based on Android 10. So both have the same UI and with that same 90Hz refresh rate, feel equally snappier. I didn't find any apps on both devices and you can easily uninstall any pre-installed apps from both phones, which are both good signs for a better user experience. Also, both phones will be receiving the Android 11 update in 2021. Since the company hasn't disclosed the sensors used on both phones, I think it will be fair for us to assume that both phones use the similar camera setup. If you just look at the megapixels, the assumption seems truer. 64MP main, 8MP ultrawide, 2MP depth and 2MP macro on the rear and a 16MP selfie sensor is present on both phones. Despite having identical sensors, the software processing and suiting capabilities are different on these. 
Let us start with daylight pictures from the main 64MP sensor, which is the only one to have autofocus in either phone. 16MP pixel beam images are equally good from both phones. Realme 7 tends to have a red stint which is more prominent in some pictures making them look unnatural. Chroma boost on the Realme 7 or dazzle color mode on the Realme 7i oversaturates things, whereas SDR mode only seemed to improve the dynamic range once in a while. Instead, it just boosted the contrast most of the time. The ultrawide pictures have less quality as compared to the main sensor, but in ample lighting they are good enough for phones of this price range. The post software processing is much aggressive on the Realme 7i as it can be seen increasing the exposure and over sharpening structures making the photo look unnatural unlike the natural pictures from the Realme 7. Also a thing to note is that both ultrawide sensors have fixed infinity focus. The 2MP depth sensor seems to struggle at times in maintaining the age detection, but despite the difference in software processing, portraits look good on both phones if lighting is ample. If you observe closely, you can again see that Realme 7 produces natural images as compared to some extra saturation job on the Realme 7i. The story continues on the 2MP fixed focus macro shots. They do let you get close to the subject and despite the clarity not being that good on either phone, Realme 7i is obviously more saturated. In selfies, you can observe the red tint easily on the Realme 7. Realme 7i has over sharpened the details but got the color reproduction correct. Both phones result overexposed background sky, but when we move into selfie portraits, Realme 7i goes all in with the AI it seems. It does manage to fix the blown out background, but no matter how many times I tried, I kept getting that weird line on the sky. I think it is an issue with my unit. To be honest, I like the selfies on the Realme 7i, but I didn't expect this much difference between the two as they have the same sensor. Realme 7 seems to have less exposure and more reduced tint as compared to the night mode pictures from the Realme 7i. Nonetheless, the main and ultrawide sensor of both phones struggle to keep up during night time. Turning on night mode drastically improves the exposure, details and dynamic range if you are okay with a slight increase in noise. In terms of video capabilities, Realme 7i can suit up to 1080p at 30fps from the rear sensor, whereas Realme 7 can go up to 4K at 30fps. I didn't find the ultra steady video option making that much of an improvement in the stabilization. I recommend you to avoid it as it zooms in too much and ruins the quality of the videos. The EIS and software stabilization on normal videos is good enough, and it's better to buy a gimbal if you want more stability. Now I hate to say this, but Realme 7i has some extra useful camera settings in the default camera app, like text scanner and pro video mode which the big brother Realme 7 lacks. Selfie videos are soft and natural on the Realme 7i, whereas Realme 7 still has that red stint but captures more details. Both phones suit selfie videos up to 1080p at 30fps, but Realme 7 can also suit slow-mo selfies, that is 1080p at 120 fps. In conclusion, I like the pictures from the Realme 7, but sometimes it was clear that Realme 7 i did better. I don't know if it's just a problem with my unit, but that red strength from the Realme 7 was quite noticeable at times. So, which phone produced better pictures? Were you able to decide? Let me know in the comment section down below. The physical fingerprint scanner on both phones is equally fast, but the one on Realme 7 is more prone to accidental touches when taking the phone in or out of the pocket. After a few accidental touches, it can only be unlocked by using a pin, which can be a bit irritating. Face unlock also works equally well on both phones, but it isn't as much secure. There isn't much significant difference between the features of these phones. Both have the latest Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0. Both phones also support dual 4G SIM along with a micro SD card up to 256GB. Realme 7 does have NFC which the Realme 7i doesn't, but I doubt nameless people will see that as a major difference in their day-to-day -day uses. Also, Realme 7 has Widevine L1 support, but Realme 7i lacks it due to its lesser resolution. The single downward firing speaker from both phones have very similar loudness and sound quality. I mean, they are both good for a lower mid-range phone. Realme 7 and Realme 7i both have 5000mAh battery which lasted me for more than a day of normal uses. In our continuous mixed uses test with 50% brightness, Wi-Fi on and at 90Hz, Realme 7 lasted around 8 hours and 20 minutes whereas Realme 7i lasted 40 minutes more. These are pretty impressive numbers so I have no complaints regarding battery life. Now during our intensive gaming test, the maximum temperature was not more than 42 degrees Celsius on both phones, so no heating issues on either. Realme 7i does lag a bit after long hours of gaming due to its inferior chipset. For charging, 30W dart charger of the Realme 7 takes only 80 minutes to fully juice it up, whereas the 18W charger on the Realme 7i was quite slow comparatively. 
It took nearly 2 hours and 30 minutes to fully charge the phone from 0 to 100. Taking the Nepalese price into consideration, 720p resolution of the Realme 7i is indeed a bummer. But if you can get over it for that snappy 90Hz it provides, you can consider this phone. The Snapdragon 662 may seem as another downside, but if you are not a gamer, it is more than enough for all other kinds of tasks. With similar camera performance as that of the Realme 7, 8GB RAM and 128GB storage at this price range is indeed a steal. Realme 7 on the other hand is a great phone, but again the Nepalese pricing is questionable. If you want that snappy 90Hz and faster processor, I don't see any other official competitor in the Nepalese market for it right now. This is it for our full review of the Realme 7 series launched in Nepal. I'll see you in the next video.